on The Renault Show, Mark answers the big question, does an extra bedroom really add value to your home? Rowan and I have a quick tip to refresh your yellowing white walls. I'll be sharing all of my surprises that have popped up in my latest renovation and visual merchandising specialist, Lukey Scully, is faced with an extreme makeover of a wardrobe. And I'll help you choose the perfect piece of art for your home. what I have had on site this week. Surprise, surprise, surprise. I'm back from tour and I thought I'd get into it just for a couple of days. And I talked to you last time about the importance of buffers. Oh my gosh. I have found everything in this property. I mean, I have found um, bee nests or beehives inside the walls. I've found snake skins. I've found full intact skeletons of possums. I've found asbestos hidden and stashed in places you just wouldn't believe. I mean, out of control. I found five layers of lino and newspaper on the kitchen floor. So cool, some amazing reading there. It's amazing what you can read on a newspaper that's like 50 years old. It's actually quite cool, but Thank gosh I had a buffer in place. Even just at this time, even at demo stage, things are already taking just that little bit longer as the house reveals a pile of surprises for us. But this takes me actually um, to something that's really, really close to my heart, and that is PPE, so personal protective equipment. A lot of people think if they don't think their house has asbestos in it, that they don't need to wear PPE. I am absolutely Staunch on the importance of wearing PPE. So for me, I won't go into a house looking at demo without a mask, without goggles, without earplugs if I'm using heavy machinery, and without gloves and naturally the right footwear. It is just not worth it. Asbestos or no asbestos, you need to protect yourself. Like you can't tell me that when I'm pulling off a wall of a house that's maybe 30 years old, even if it's not asbestos, that anything inside that wall is good for my eyes or good for my lungs or good for my skin or good for anything so guys pay pay up because if you have as many surprises in any of your properties as I've had from this one in the last couple of days you need to keep yourself covered um, can't wait you know what do you know what I'm really stoked about I'm stoked that I've been journaling this. My friends and family have absolutely loved as I've shared out the snake skins and the possum skeletons and all the other stuff I've found. Liquid gold. And I reckon in a year I'll pull my app back out and look back at this property and have a giggle about this moment. All right, so I'd love you all to welcome to the couch, Mark Kentwell. Thank you. So Mark is the principal of PRD Nationwide Newcastle and Lake Macquarie, and he's here today to talk to me about one of the most asked questions that I get from all people when they're renovating and they're looking to maybe make some floor plan changes in their house. And it is the old age question of how much value does an extra bedroom add? Yeah, it's a really good question, Naomi, and, and it's one of those Can you ones answer that, it? Yeah, I can. I can. I'm going to answer it in a few different ways. I'm going for ways. it. Okay. Yeah. It's contextual. So, you know, it depends on the price point that you're in. It okay. depends on what the demand is in the area for the product you're about to create. Okay. So, for example, if you've got a home that is in a family area and right. families are looking to get into that area, and most of the family homes there are four bedroom, two bathroom, two lock up garage. Yep. And they'll probably come with two living areas. If you've got a three bedroom home and you create a fourth bedroom, that's gonna open you up to another You're category winning. of buyers. Yeah. Absolutely. So you've now got like on domainandrealestate.com or the whatever website that you market on, it's gonna be four, two, two yes. instead of three, two, two. Yes. So that's automatically gonna find you more buyers because the filter opens up of how many people are looking at it. But that's only because, am I right in saying that's only because that's what people are looking for in that area. That's the demographic in that, in that area. area. In that family okay. area. Yeah. So, you know, 
if you've got, for example, a two-bedroom property, but right. you're in amongst a lot of terraces in that area, they're very slim, they're very compact, there's no off-street parking, most of your market is sort of the funky inner-city couples, yep. the families are less of a thing. Yes, you might be a bit different than the others, but the cost of creating that bedroom in a terrace environment where you've got to go beyond, you've got to probably walk through the second bedroom to yes. get there in the upper level, yep. it's a big extension. Will the cost come back to you? That would be hard. That'd be hard to do that. So that's an interesting point. So it's not just about, and this goes back to, I know that we've had conversations about overcapitalizing. Mm -hmm. This goes, this actually interweaves with that. So Definitely. it's not only if you're meeting your market, mm -hmm. but it's also if you're in a structure that it's actually an achievable thing at a decent price point. At a decent price point. So if you take a nice fifties brick yep. home, sort of post deco sort of era. Or even a hardy plank. Do you remember oh, the good old yeah. fashioned hardy plank Take house? a hardy plank, even if it's a bit um, beyond the 50s. Yep. Some of those properties were built with three bedrooms in them, but an abundance of living area. They were. So they're like three really living out of areas. Balance. Yeah. So, okay, they're homes that you can quite easily create a fourth bedroom in and still have two living areas left over. You've now opened up your, your audience. Yes. So the person that doesn't need the fourth, they still know they can use it for guests or an extra study yep. or a playroom and the grandkids come around or whatever it might be. Yes. But the people who need that fourth bedroom, they're going to pay more for it. So when you've got multiple target markets that are now competing for the property, again, it's a supply and demand thing. Okay. More demand for the same product and it wasn't expensive to create. What about though, when you start to get to really big bedroom numbers, so like fives and sixes? Yeah, so about five is where you'll find that if they're a big family and they really need five, great. They'll pay it. They'll pay it. But when you go from five to six, like it's what I'd call the law of diminishing returns. <laughs> So, like in, so there's not that many crazy people that have four children uh, like me they're, running they're around. Out there. They're out there. They're out <laughs> We're there. We're here. But it's, you don't get the mass appeal. So, okay. yeah, I've had properties on the market where they've got the six bedroom. Everyone's like, it's too big for us. And you're like, well, just don't go in that room. <laughs> just lock the like, door. It's the same price as a four bedder down the road. And it's got all these other features. Like, don't go in the room. But they're like, no, it's just too big for us. I don't know how we'd look after it. And I'm thinking, really? <laughs> But it's one of those things where you're not getting the same uplift just to go to the sixth bedroom. Okay. And do you notice that, so it's just, uh, I guess it's about obviously demand, but even once you get past your four, four bedrooms, so going to your fifth and definitely going to your sixth. Yeah, I, I would find that if you're going to a fifth or a sixth, unless you're on a big sort of laid out sort of residence where you really need to do a grand home yep. to, to maximise a really high land value or a big property. Yes. Or guest wings are involved. Yes. You know, you're building the fifth or the sixth because it suits you and you need it. And then when you go to on sell, you're hoping that you can find someone like you. You know, so in that circumstance for me, if you are in that position, it's about making sure that you could maybe have it as a transitional space. Mm -hmm. So you design it in a way that it could be easily converted to a music room, to a library, to something other than just a bedroom. Whereas if you sort of stuffed it all the way at the end and the only option for it was to ever be seen as a bedroom because it maybe had an ensuite attached to it, that sort of limits your options when you go to get out. Absolutely. Or you can look at the other side of it. Can we make it almost self-contained in that area? Yeah. So they might have a teenager or an elderly parent um, that's sort of staying with them or living with them. Yep. And then when you go to on sell it, that might appeal to someone because they can Airbnb it. Yes. Or they might have a lot of guests coming over from overseas that stay there. But at least it can be shut away or it could be another living space, like you say. So I guess the... the I, the big message here is there isn't literally a simple dollar value that you can go, an extra bedroom is going to get me 40, an extra mm. bedroom is going to get me 10. No, you definitely can't apply that logic. Um, it, it's different in almost every suburb and almost every area across the country. It's where are the mainstream of buyers looking to, what, what product are the mainstream of buyers looking and for And can there? you create it? Can you create it without huge expense? I love it. There you go. All of you are looking to create an extra bedroom. I think the keys here are, does someone need it? Do they want it? Do you need and want it? And how much is it going to cost you to create it? So again, Mark, thanks so much. We'll see you again soon. No worries, Naomi. Wow, we have a challenge on tonight's show for you. We have a master wardrobe makeover and rumor has it it is going to be so challenging that we have called in the cavalry. We have Lukey from Get Sorted coming to give us a hand. So let's go check it out before she gets here.
Oh, I wonder what we're going to see in, oh my gosh. Now this is a cluttered wardrobe. I think I'm actually going to have to get started in here and rip out a bit of this overpopulated clothes before Lukey even gets here. A little bit of luxury, like just a dash of luxury, is so beautiful in some spaces. And in this wardrobe for this client, we have been so lucky to be able to pop in a dash of luxury, but practical luxury with these Sagittine storage boxes. Now, I mean, these are next level. Not only are they a phenomenal textured finish with beautiful practical leather handles, but they're also lined. Now this one, the, our client has a huge foot, a size 11. This one actually fits six pairs of her wedges, which is such a great way to store her shoes. And in here, very special, wedding shoes. I tell you what, this dash of luxury from Sagittine is going to be very welcome in this wardrobe. So I'm here today with Lukey from Get Sorted. And oh my gosh, Lukey, thank you for joining us. Nice to be here. And thank you, thank for, you for completely throwing yourself <laughs> into that massive wardrobe makeover that we have on this episode. It's mammoth. It was pretty big. It was a, a big start, um, but look, within three or four hours, we've got it as a completely functioning wardrobe like and looking quite pretty. So when you approach something like that though, most people would literally throw their tools down, their hands in the air, <laughs> and they'd say, I'm out, I'm out. So how do you yeah. overcome that starting factor? Like when you walked into that, what was the first thing you knew you needed to do? I knew I had to get everything out of there to start with okay. and restack completely. So I've now put some baskets in there, um, which, you know, outlay of $70. That's has nothing really. Has, is nothing really. And it's completely transformed. Well, see, space. I haven't seen it yet. I can't wait to see it. Yeah. Now, so then for anyone who's wanting to, because I'm sure once everyone sees the transformation, I'm betting people are going to be going, I need to make over my wardrobe this weekend. Yes. So what would be three things that you would suggest after getting everything out, literally removing it all, Strip what it would be three things that you'd tell people to do? Okay, so all the storage solutions in the world um, are fantastic, but you need to declutter to start with. <sighs> So you need to get rid of anything that doesn't make you feel good, that doesn't fit, um, and that's oh, looking really? a little tired. Do you mean there's no, I'll get into those next season? No, well, it just means that every time you look at those clothes, it doesn't make you happy. Feel crappy. You feel a bit rubbish, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So okay, get so get rid of anything that doesn't fit, that doesn't make you feel good, yeah. that you maybe haven't worn in two years. Yes. Okay, what's the next thing? Next would be to put everything into categories. Okay. So that will help you further declutter. So if you find that you have 18 long sleeve black tops, you realize that you have not got rid of enough. Has she been in my wardrobe? <laughs> Maybe. Okay. <laughs> I'm talking about my own too. Oh, honestly. good, good, good. You can never have enough black tops, right? <laughs> no, that's true. That's true. Okay. So if you've got piles of identical clothes that are the same size, you probably need to have a good hard look at yourself. I think so. Okay. And what about the third one? Well, think about who you're giving it to as well. So good that point. is going to make somebody else's life better. Um, I like it. When I as part of the service, I take everything away that is no longer required. And I have a few a few charities that I donate to. That's so. fantastic. So people, you not only make it better, <laughs> you take all of the stuff away to make someone else's life better. That's right. That's, That's actually, actually right. beautiful, Luki. Yeah. That's very cool. All right. So once I see this wardrobe and once we show the client this wardrobe and they're like beyond excited, <laughs> how are they going to keep it like that? It's a little bit addictive. Once you see your <laughs> bit like best self, a bit like chocolate, Yes. Um, you, you're then wanting to imagine your best self going forward. So you see that 
um, that organized space and think, yes, I can be organized like this as well. And you, you will generally keep it that way. Is it kind of like you've ripped the Band-Aid off for people? Yeah. So you've ripped the Band-Aid off and, and, and taken them back to a starting point that's manageable. That's right. Yeah. And it just takes that one step, which a lot of people can do themselves, but will get me into to just let them take that first step. And I guess part of that is not only that <laughs> they don't have the time, some people, mm, but it right. might also be that they don't have the headspace. Like they don't have oh, the yeah. clarity to yeah. undertake, like literally the client's entire probably past eight or nine years of her life has been in that wardrobe. Yeah. And that's a big thing to tackle. It is. And she won't want to go back to the way it was now that she sees it this way. So that'll help her keep things tidy. I wonder what else it could transform in her life. Well, can you go and yeah. show me? I can't wait to see it. Yeah, yeah of course. All let's right, go. let's go. Lukey, I'm, I'm, for the first time in my life, I'm actually a little speechless. Like, this transformation is epic. Well, thank you. Yes, it was rather, but a few short hours and it's done. And look at this. Who would have thought of this? Horizontal folding and stacking. Yes. So you can see everything. You don't mess up the top thing when you pull the bottom thing out. That's right. I just... If the client is half as tongue-tied about this as I am, they're going, they're going to be blown away. Oh, I'm so pleased. Well, the client can actually come in and shop their own wardrobe now. It's going to be an exciting time. Shopping yeah. with no spend. That's right. I love yeah. it. Thank you, Lukey. My pleasure. your renovation from a timeline perspective is a true true skill so you need to make sure that your timelines are as tight as they can be to get you from one end of the renovation to the other and the quickest possible time frame because then you have least holding costs if you're not occupying the home but at the same time you need to squash into your timelines a buffer between each of the segments so for example if you know that your bathroom is going to be sheeted by Tuesday and you want your waterproofer in on Wednesday it might be worth having half a day or one day buffer on Thursday before you arrange to bring the tiler in similarly once the tiler has finished off let's say he finishes off on a Friday it would be great Great to buffer in just a small amount of time before you get the plumber to come in and fit back off and that is because stuff happens guys the products are sometimes late sometimes trades run late on other jobs they get caught up when it comes to plumbers and electrical and gas fitters I often find they might get called out to an emergency and all of that is okay you just need to plan for it so this is exactly how I plan my timelines absolutely everything I do in regard to my reno is inside my app. So inside there is not only when I've got to meet trades to quote, it's when I need to order materials, when materials are arriving, when installations are starting, when installations are due to finish. And most importantly, I start with the end in mind. So I work out exactly when I want that project to be finished and then I back calculate all the way to now. So what needs to happen each and every day to get me to that specific end point. So rather than calculating forward, I actually have my final date. I want everything finished and I reverse engineer it. Now, obviously there are a couple of big key things that I don't like to move around too much. So one of them is when my kitchen's arriving and when it needs to be installed. Installed. my other one is actually my floors they're one of the biggest surface areas that you're going to be doing in your house so if you're restoring old beautiful floorboards you will actually need the inside of that site closed if it's entirely floorboards during that time so I have that and the kitchen install as a really big pivotal piece 
and I allow everything else to be massaged around it. But to be able to stay on top of it, I totally need it in my phone because every single day, I sa I'll say it again, every single day, every morning and every afternoon during your renovation, you need to be tweaking and seeing how you can massage it. If one trade might be running late or a product didn't come in on time, what can you swap around? What can you massage? What can you manipulate to make sure you end up with that end date that you always intended on? My name's Edwina Sharrick and my husband and I, Ross, we built on five acres just outside of Tamworth in a suburb called Moore Creek. And we actually created this home because we were passionate about creating a sustainable home and something that wasn't using heaps of resources. We have two young children, Polly and Theo, and we found it hard to find someone who could do that for us. So my husband decided to do it himself. We had very limited reno experience. We had done up two older houses, and by done up, it was nothing hugely structural. My husband assured me he could do it, and I said, well, show me something you've built, and he showed me a table that he built in year 10 in wood technology class. So that's all the skill that I had seen before I said to him, all right, go for it. The entire build, my husband did it, and I will say my husband did it single-handedly like a lot of people say oh so you did own a builder and they think that you manage the builders and manage the contractors he went off to TAFE he did a weekend of learning about owner builder and he physically did everything except when we got to the very end we had a plumber electrician and we had a gentleman that came in and helped him with the plastering and the tiling so we describe it, it's like a big tin shed, um, but it's the shape of the house that's so important. So the majority of the house, it's an H. And so one whole side of the house is north facing with a lot of glazing um, and all our living space is there. And then we have a concrete floor. So that heats up like a heat bank, concrete bench tops. And our bedroom is on that side. And then there's courtyards in between and then the kids' bedrooms study and another bathroom and a spare room. So all of the rooms heat up beautifully with the northern sun in winter. And then in summer, they're beautifully shaded. Look, I won't pretend that it was all um, rainbows and cupcakes. It was pretty challenging. As I said, I had two young children. He would work um, six hour, like six days a week 12, 14 hour days. It did get pretty stressful towards the end when we were on time and on budget, but we had to move out of our house, which we had sold. So we had eight weeks of not having a home um, and being homeless with a two and a four year old was not cool. We totally did rough it at the end because we had run out of money and we had to sink everything that we had into the build. And I was adamant that the house was finished before we moved in because otherwise I felt like we would never actually finish it. My advice for anybody who's looking at doing this is don't underestimate the commitment. Like it is huge to do owner builder, um, but where we were really conscious on spending our money was things that we weren't going to be able to change later. So we bought the top insulation. We bought, you know, every, the windows and doors that cost a lot of money because you couldn't replace those. But on the flip side, our cabinetry in our bathrooms, bedrooms, laundry is all Ikea. Um, we used Ikea taps and they're actually really great and good quality, but it was so much cheaper than doing custom cabinetry because that's the sort of thing that if in five or 10 years, we want to change it and put in custom cabinetry, it's much easier to do as opposed to moving walls, windows, doors, insulation, things like that that are there for a lifetime now. So I guess we were also so lucky that we live in Tamworth and we have my parents here and they were an incredible support. I just don't think you can improve on perfect. Like I, there's, there's nothing about it that I would change. And we've been in it a year and a half. And there's not many people I think that can say that about a new build. Like there's often that, oh, I wish we had done this or I wish we had have done that. I absolutely love everything about it. Oh, 
guys, how many of you have painted a beautiful door white once upon a time and only a couple of years later come back and seen it's all yellowing and off? It looks like it's had smoke damage to it. Well, never fear, you do not have to undergo that pain anymore because I have found our answer. We're going to be using it on this project. Um, so what it actually is, it's a Torbman's product. It's the Ultimate Enamel Alkali Base. So it gets you your amazing crisp white or whatever tone you like. This one is cotton ball, only first coat, cotton ball, and it is a Torbman's color. But the bonus is using this product, it is a water wash up. It is a water base, even though it's alkali base, dry time, and it has the toughness and the sheen levels that you are after with your oil based paints. So it's really the answer to all of our prayers. So let's check out how it works. Bespoke styling is the perfect way to complete your renovation. So join me for some styling secrets. Dressing your walls with art can be a phenomenal way to finish the look and feel of each of your spaces. So I'm gonna share with you right now my top tips on choosing the best art for your property. Consider the scale of the piece of art you use. So if you have a huge space and a huge wall, avoid putting a tiny piece of art in the middle. Trust your instincts. That's right, when you're choosing art for your property, it's about what you connect with, about what you love. So if your first thought when you see a piece of art is, oh my gosh, it's for me, then chances are it's the right one. The internet is an amazing place when it comes to the world of art. We're no longer stuck to just viewing in local galleries. So get online and check out some of the phenomenal artists at your doorstep around the world. Black and white or monochrome art is timeless and classic. So look into it, find the beauty and use it in your homes. You'll be absolutely blown away at the different styles that black and white or monochrome art can be used with. Be bold and be brave, I tell you, when it comes to your art. So consider mixing up your traditional and slightly modern pieces. If you have a traditional home, consider popping in a slightly more modern piece and vice versa. It can completely transform the look and feel of your room. We spend so much time on social media and now it has a purpose. That's right. Go art shopping on Instagram, I tell you. The amount of artists that are all around the globe, boutique and quite large, that have their phenomenal works displayed on forums like Instagram and Pinterest. So get to it. Put some of that voyeuristic time into shopping time and find an artist that might be just around the corner or across the other side of the world that has a purpose perfect piece for your property. Art is not just painting. I want you to open your mind and look around at the phenomenal mediums. So the different graphics, photography, hand drawings, not just traditional paintings that you can be using in your space. Last but definitely not least, just start. That's right. With the way that art is around our world now, there are some amazingly affordable pieces available to you. Art no longer needs to be a lifetime investment all the time. So get to it. Start your collection. Make a purchase. You could even look to rent a piece before you make the decision. quick update I am deep deep into renovation right now but I've taken some time out I'm away from site I'm actually on the other side of the country and I'm managing it from afar and man we've had some headaches so the Tyler lost two of his staff members so he is literally a week and a half behind so instead of pushing everyone back I've kind of had to flip him to the end as much as I can and slot other things in in the middle so that I don't end up running one and a half or two weeks late we found two ton of concrete buried just below the surface along one of our fence lines I mean the list goes on it rained for four days when we were meant to be painting outside the backboards on the house were rotted but no stress, 
no stress because I've kept on top of my timelines, had a buffer in my budget, and I absolutely know if I keep managing this well, I'm gonna come in on time and on budget. But the reason I'm out here, I'm getting some space medicine from the project. Even when you're renovating, you don't have to run yourself down like you see on all the TV renovation shows. You don't have to become unwell because when you do that, your final product will pay, your relationships will pay, your budget and your timelines will pay because you'll become fatigued and unwell so get outside soak up some of this amazing space medicine take a big deep breath and realize that this is all fun and part of the Renault journey okay, we're rolling are we flashing we're flashing okay we're flashing at what it does to the walls that was really bad and when you paint this beautiful <laughs> <laughs> Next time on The Renault Show, Rowan and I will reveal the easiest way to lay faux grass. I'll share my styling secrets for styling bedside tables. Rowan will answer the question, how do you keep your bathroom renovation costs low but not lose out on luxury? And Chloe from the Greenery Sydney will break down how to give your indoor succulents the most love. And Aaron is back to show you how to revive those backyard agaves. <laughs>